Hello and welcome to Recyclist, presented by Diamond Scientific. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and I'm being joined by a very special guest, and I would like to welcome to the show right now the CEO of Waga Energy, Gwenael Prince. Thank you so much for joining me today, sir. Thank you very much. Hi, Eric. I hope you're doing well. I am. I'm doing very well. How about yourself, sir? I'm well. Very glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me to your podcast. Absolutely, yes. We've been watching uh, WAGA's progress over the past uh, year, year and a half, and you guys have been continuing to to make a lot of very big and very interesting moves. And uh, I, I do think, especially on the, the Western side over in North America, as you guys are starting to emerge, there may not be uh, an overabundance of people who are familiar with WAGA energy. So if you could, sir, very briefly explain uh, who you are and what Waga Energy is. Yeah, sure, with pleasure. So Waga Energy is a company with a mission. Uh, we created Waga Energy with my two other uh, co-founders, Mathieu Lefebvre, Nicolas Paget, um, to have an impact on climate change by valorizing what is a pollution today, uh, the methane emitted by the landfill, and turn it into uh, a source of energy clean and affordable source of energy, which is the RNG, Renewable Natural Gas. Um, we created that company back in 2015 in France, based on a special technology that we called the Waga Box. And the Waga Box is really a product, kind of a small scale refinery that we install on landfill and to turn the landfill gas into renewable natural gas. And that renewable natural gas is a low carbon fuel. Um, and the benefit of this gas is to be able to displace volume of fossil fuel and to buy this renewable natural gas with a much lower uh, carbon intensity scores compared to fossil fuel. So we founded the company back in 2015 and we had a few milestones in our growth. Uh, I came in the US in 2019 uh, to open the US subsidiary. Uh, in 2021, we went public on the French uh, market, Euronext. We raised approximately 125 million euros to fuel our expansion. So Wag Energy is a company with a mission. We, we have a technology, but we are really project developers and operators of our project, meaning that uh, we do not sell our technology, but we rather prefer to develop project and sign long-term partnership with landfill owner and with gas of takers uh, to develop project for the next 20 years. A, li a lifetime of a typical project is 20 years. Worldwide, approximately 200 people. Uh, the headquarter is in France. We have uh, subsidiaries, a few subsidiaries in Europe, uh, Spain, uh, UK and Italy. And in North America, we have subsidiary in Canada, developing project and being a manufacturing center for uh, WAGA. And, uh, the USA, where we develop uh, and build projects. Yeah, speaking of Spain, you guys uh, uh, helped facilitate the first biogas to renewable natural gas facility in Spain. Is that correct? Yeah, it, it was really a, a market opening we did in Spain because there was no landfill gas to uh, RNG units and there was no RNG uh, units as well in Spain. So what we had to do was to create a biomethane purchase agreement dedicated to that facility. Because otherwise, in France, for example, there is a feed-in tariff warranted by French government. So anytime you want to produce uh, biomethane, basically, French government will guarantee you a feed-in tariff that is high enough for you to make a project. But in Spain, it doesn't exist. So we had to find an off-taker willing to off-take that uh, molecule that we're producing in a landfill in Spain, uh, namely uh, Canmata. So it was very interesting. It has been a lengthy process, but we were able to make it to open uh, this uh, Spanish market and do a first of its kind in Spain. That's really, really cool. And I, I wanted to know what what was it about this market? Because you know you you putting all this work in, trying to get all these biomethane and renewable natural gas projects going in Europe. Uh, the Waga Box, which we're going to be talking about here in just a couple of moments, I also saw that is the product of literally over a decade of research and development. So this is th this is not 
this was not just some spur of the moment decision to jump into this space. So what was it about renewable natural gas and about this industry that uh, attracted you and your co-founders? Um, yeah, so I think it was, so there is there is a history behind uh, our association and the technology. I think it's interesting to touch base on that history. Uh, I met my co-founders in uh, Air Liquid Group. Air Liquid is one of the pioneers in the biogas industry in the US. And at that time, we were working with, uh, within Air Liquid to develop a solution for the US market when there is air intrusion in the landfill gas. And it may seem uh, strange, but the separation in between methane and nitrogen and oxygen is not so easy because of uh, the presence of oxygen and oxygen and methane can be uh, can, 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 can start a combustion, right? So there was some safety uh, topics to address. So we are developing that technology within the Air Liquid group for the US market because, uh, again, Air Liquid was, is a well-established player in the RNG industry in the US. And for, I would say, some very good reasons for a big company like Air Liquid, they decided not to pursue that technology because there were, there were some technological risks on one end, and uh, the market was not, I would say, a big enough market for them. Um, so they decided to put an end to that R&D project. And that was the very opportunity we got with Mathieu and Nicolas to start our own company based on uh, what we developed within the Aliquid group. And then we continued the R&D and found new ways to safely make the separation of all the compounds from the landfill gas, so carbon dioxide, oxygen, nitrogen. And we built that technology, we named the Wagabox, we patented that technology. And that was, I would say, the very start of our company. So there was a technology on one end and a business model, an approach to the business on the other end, which is not to sell a complicated technology to others. It was to sell a solution to others. So we say to landfill owners, we're going to install a Wagabox. We will be investing that Wagabox. We will be developing the project and we will share a revenue to you so that it's totally risk-free for you. We take all the risk, all the, all the complexity of developing a project and managing that technology on us, and we will be sharing a revenue. And it was kind of a win-win uh, approach that allowed us to develop quickly uh, on the French market uh, and then to expand uh, abroad. And expanding abroad you are. You've got uh, multiple uh, Wagabox projects uh, already going on in Canada. As of this recording, you just finalized a new project for Indiana here in the United States. So uh, it almost seems like it's going too quickly. How, how are you feeling about this kind of aggressive expansion over into North America? Yeah, so it's, uh, there was a, a, bit, a little bit of a learning curve. I think uh, when I landed in the US, I was only uh, me. It was me alone back in 2019, mm -hmm. and quickly I started to hire uh, local people, American people, French-American people, people that were able to unlock our market potential. Now, as you touch base on that topic, we are really on the scale-up, in the scale-up phase of the company. I think you, you, tell, you, you call it the hockey stick uh, shape, you know, when uh, you, you have, a, I would say, a more moderate growth, that was still quick from uh, US, French standards, I would say, but addressing a very big uh, market like the US, the growth is, is much quicker. So what does it mean now to us? It means uh, being able to scale up our uh, supply chain. And this is what we are doing right now. So there is a few, a few um, I would say, topics you need to address when scaling up a company. The first one being being able to deliver on your promises, right? It's nice to be able to sign project, but you have to deliver. You have to deliver your promises. You have to be excellent in operation. I think it's one of our uh, trademark with Waga. We've always delivered what we sold. And for doing that, we need to streamline our uh, our efforts, industrial efforts. So rationally, uh, so it's about standardizing our product, um, unlocking the supply chain, so we've developed manufacturing uh, capabilities in Canada and in France. Being able to quickly deliver our project on the project side, so being able to quickly develop all the natural gas interconnect, electrical interconnect, 
build up relationship with the local contractors to deliver, uh, to build our project. And it's another side of the, of, I would say, of, of the scale up is to be able to fund this project, right? We need, uh, because the business model of Waga is to own and to operate the facilities. So every time we sign a new contract, it means an invest investment decision we have to take within Waga. So we need to streamline as well uh, funding capabilities. And right now we are working on a few facilities to fund portfolios of projects for us to be able to continue our growth. And, and, and last point I would say, and maybe the most important is to onboard people, to be able to, to continue attracting people, best people uh, for us to, to expand in the US. Well, I'm excited for you guys. And I do absolutely want to talk uh, about the, the Waga box because I, I think it's so interesting, the science behind it, the design behind it, and specifically talking about the design, you mentioned how it's you know kind of set up to be this, this mini RNG, this mini renewable natural gas refinery. And it feels like just from the design, I don't want to necessarily say the simplified design aspect of it, but it seems like it was designed specifically to be uh, for relative ease of implementation, something, you know, a solution, a, uh, a system that you can and bring in and, and, and install with relative ease. Was that a big design component of what you were going for with it? Yeah, it's an excellent topic. Uh, I would say my father in biogas within Airliquid was Charlie Anderson, and Charlie Anderson was a well-known RNG expert uh, from Airliquid. And he told me, this industry, it's kiss. Keep it simple and stupid, right? So it was kind of my, <laughs> yeah. And it was my guideline because uh, when I was in France, I was in charge of R&D and putting together the technology. So I know very well, you know, the technology we've developed. And I know, uh, and my 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 purpose, my the, the, the real goal I had was not to get the highest performances at the cost of a higher complexity, but to have good enough performances but with a high uptime of the unit and a high simplicity of the unit. Now, when you look at the, uh, so if I, uh, I'm, I'm going to expand a little bit about uh, the different uh, technologies we're using in the Waga box. It may seem yeah. a little bit complex, but when you think about the simplicity, for example, the, of the cryogenic distillation, it's not that complex, right? And in this industry, the more simple you are, the simpler you are, you know, the more cost effective you will be, the more reliable you will be. And at the end, for a facility to produce gas, it must be up and running, right? Because we're making revenue based on our set of gas. So uptime of the plant, simplicity, having a plant that can be unattended is really key, right? Um, so now, if I am to, 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 to discuss a little bit more, the different technologies we're putting together in the Waga box, there is a few process steps, right? When you look at landfill gas, landfill gas is a mixture composed of uh, methane and uh, carbon dioxide in the same uh, amount, approximately, same percentage. Then you have uh, air intakes, and that's, what I think, one of the key benefits. I'm going to touch base a little bit of that key benefit. Why do we have, have air in landfills? Um, landfills are not perfectly tight, right? That's, uh, it's, it's a very big system with trashed and a cover, a cover that can be totally tight, right? Uh, and you have as well an active cells where uh, the landfill owner is, is landfilling trash. And this, under this cell, you will have some uh, methane uh, emission and you want to, 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 to take those methane as well and it will come with the air, right? So at the end, you have to deal with a variable proportion of air. Yep. I mean, the harder you pull on the well field system, on the landfill, the more, the more nitrogen and oxygen you will have, right? But at the same time, the less methane emission you will have. And I think that's a key point because now and in the future, those methane emission will be more and more scrutinized. There is now uh, in satellites, high definition, I mean, I would say um, uh, some methane measurement, methane sensors that can accurately measure some plumes of methane around uh, big methane emitters. And landfills are some of them, right? So it's critical for a landfill owner to be sure that he can avoid as much as possible methane emission. 
So now we can see the importance of, uh, of being able to deal with air intrusion when we upgrade landfill gas. So landfill gas, I, if I summarize, it's methane and carbon dioxide, some nitrogen and oxygen, and then you have some pollutants, uh, moisture. Pollutants is VOCs, hydrogen sulfide, and moisture. So we have to separate all those compounds to produce an early pure stream of methane containing usually 97, 98% of methane. And for the, for the carbon dioxide specifically, uh, I know you guys use a, a membrane system that will filter out most of the carbon dioxide. And that is something that, you know, is, is fairly often implemented. I am incredibly interested in the, the, the secondary phase where you're removing the nitrogen, the oxygen, those pollutants. That's actually a you touched on it already, but it, that's an actually cryogenic system that you use to to separate those. So I was incredibly interested in in how that works and uh, how that's implemented into the system because that's the first time I've seen a system like that in in an RNG production. Yeah, so you're right. I mean, the wire box is really a combination of two big uh, of two of two technologies, well-known technology. The first one is uh, polymeric membranes for carbon dioxide mm -hmm. removal and some oxygen. And the other one is cryogenic distillation. So now, why are we using cryogenic distillation? When you want to separate uh, a gaseous mixture at ambient temperature, you must either, uh, you can use, you know, a kind of filtration system, membrane, but, or adsorption system. Uh, but the problem though is the molecules, the, the kinetic diameter of the molecule of methane, nitrogen, and oxygen are closed in size. What does it mean? It means that when you want to filter those molecules, whether using a molecular sieve adsorption or using membranes, it's very difficult. And at the end, you get a poor methane recovery rate, a poor selectivity of your process. Now, what is interesting with uh, distillation is you take the same molecule and then you cool it down, right? You cool this mixture down and then you will start liquefying first the methane and then the oxygen and then the nitrogen, right? So now you can control, you know, uh, you can have better, I would say, uh, separation power, a much better selectivity if you separate this molecule, not based on their kinetic diameter, but based on their boiling temperature because they not have the same boiling temperature at a given pressure and this is basically what we are doing in the cryogenic distillation so first we take the mixture of nitrogen oxygen and and methane we cool it down in a heat exchanger then we liquefy it and then we will distillate this mixture in the same way we distillate alcohol we distillate alcohol to get an enriched uh, stream of alcohol compared to the mixture of water and alcohol. And what we will be doing in this cryogenic distillation is get an, an enriched stream of methane, 97, 98%, and recover that methane, vaporize it against the feed stream to recover the cold, and then we recover the gaseous product, which is methane, that can be compressed and injected into the grid. So the benefit of cryogenic distillation is really to improve the separation power in between methane, nitrogen, and oxygen. That's so incredibly interesting. I had some ideas about how it may potentially work, but actually liquefying the gas is not something I considered as part of that process. That's really, really interesting. And uh, so between the membranes and that, even with the simplified process, we're still able to put 97, 98% pure methane gas directly into the pipeline through the Wagga box. Yeah, I mean, so our technology is almost insensitive to nitrogen, and that's another benefit of, uh, of, of, uh, of the cryogenic distillation. I would say conventional technologies based on adsorption, membranes, they have a limitation in the amount of nitrogen they can take from the landfill. 7, 8% usually is their max. But now when you look at small to medium sized landfills, now we need to talk a little bit about the market we want to address. 2,700 mm -hmm. landfills in the US, most of them are small to medium sized landfills. Landfills that are most of the time maybe well operated, but you don't 
you can spend a lot of money, a lot of people, fine-tuning the well field, avoiding air intrusion, etc., etc. So at the end, uh, the landfill gas from those landfills contains more nitrogen and oxygen. But this is the main source of, of, of biogas in the US, right? There are some jumbo projects, very big sites, well-known, uh, with a lot of developers chasing those projects. But for the small to medium-sized landfills, there is a lot. And it can be a very useful source of energy. So um, we need to be able to remove easily this nitrogen. And with the cryogenic distillation, nitrogen is not condensable, right? So separating nitrogen is basically super easy. And sometimes we have to deal with landfill having 25, 30% nitrogen in the biogas. I would say an average value uh, through all our sites in Europe, in the US, where in between 15 to 20% nitrogen as average value in the landfill gas and uh, in all of our sites, we are producing 97, 98 plus percent of methane in the RNG with a, a, a very good efficiency, right? With not a lot of methane loss in the process. So when it comes to the, the system as a whole, how long does it typically take to to set up and to to implement to go from a handshake to go from an agreement to actually producing RNG in the pipeline? Yeah, there was a time, I would say, uh, be, before 2016 maybe, where the most mm -hmm. critical part of a project was the offtake. Right, you wanted to have a good offtake for you to develop a project, and there were plenty of landfills willing to give you the gas, right, and to do a project with you. Now, as things have changed in the sense that scarcity is in the resource, in the biomass, in the access to the biogas from landfill. And now we have very good offtake. So now offtake is not anymore the problem. So it's really uh, being down selected as a partner with the landfill owner. So there is a lot of commercial effort and uh, to put together the best offer for the landfill owner in order to share, in order for the landfill owner to realize as much value as he can from this biogas, because he's ultimately producing, uh, he's the one ultimately producing the biogas, right? So I would say the process of developing projects start with signing a gas, right? With the developer, and then we uh, continue developing the project uh, we move forward with the natural gas interconnect signature. Uh, and usually this piece of, I mean, this element of the project can be lengthy because it's a case by case situation. You don't end up with the same natural gas interconnect, uh, depending on the site, depending on whether you're interconnecting to a distribution pipeline or a transportation pipeline, not the same pressure, not the same requirement, not the same permitting. Um, and then there is, I would say, the realization, the construction of the wire box, which is, uh, I would say, 12 to 18 months, 12 months after engineering. And our target, uh, and now if you look at the project as a whole, uh, factoring uh, the construction the, uh, well, the construction lead time, the development lead time for natural gas interconnect, electrical interconnect, and uh, BOP construction, balance of plant construction, so civil work, mechanical work, etc. Uh, it's... I would say I'm going to give a range. It's in between 18 to 24 months for us to deliver our project. I think that's actually quite a bit sooner than most people were expecting. But but yeah, uh, again, what you guys are doing over there at WAG Energy, I, I think is really, really interesting. The simplicity of the system, the cryogenic uh, implementation, and the way you guys are just continuing to expand. I certainly don't think that Indiana is going to be the last project that uh, we hear about from you guys in the coming months. But yeah, if you want to check out more about Wagga Energy, uh, where can people do that, sir? Well, um, so we have a, a new website with a new uh, new logos um, and that have been recently released. So you can uh, contact as well uh, our uh, commercial team, uh, Tanguy Larjo, French American citizen. Uh, he's uh, he's managing our uh, our uh, commercial effort, business development effort. Uh, you can you can contact me uh, directly. I mean, I'm happy to to explain what we are doing, and to explain as well the importance of what we are doing. Really, 
developing those small to medium sized landfill is going to be the next challenge of the industry. And we have the right solution because it's a product we are duplicating. And why are we doing that? It's for the common good. It's to mitigate climate change, to remove this methane from the atmosphere and to displace volumes of natural gas by RNG, right? So we are kind of a RNG activist, but this is really what is motivating us developing that company because developing a company scaling up is, 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 uh, is challenging uh, every day. But uh, what is really motivating us is the why we are doing that, right? Um, so yeah, happy to discuss with uh, people being interested by what we're doing, uh, either uh, through either connecting through me or uh, our business team uh, with Tangi. Uh, you can definitely check out WAG Energy uh, online. Also, make sure to visit diamondside.com, a leader in gas analysis. Make sure to visit them online at diamondsci.com. That's diamondsci.com or call them at 321-223-7500. I'd like to give one last incredible, incredibly large thank you to uh, my guest today, Mr. Juanel Prince, uh, the CEO of WAG Energy. Incredibly excited for your guys' future. And thank you once again for joining me today, sir. Yeah, thank you very much, Eric, for uh, taking the time to, to ask questions about what we're doing. Very happy. Have a nice day.